Hey guys, it's JH. Welcome to Practice Tea. And it's actually, it's got back to being pretty hot. Not as hot as it's been lately, but it's been, it's, it's hot. Okay guys, a couple of really interesting things today. Now Bill Phillips from uh, MMI Golf, who's my my partner in crime with the uh, the uh, channel lock development program. Yeah, I mentioned to uh, to Bill about flaring both feet to the uh, to the trail side. Okay, we've got the the trail foot, and we're actually trying to flare it out more. Now, Mr. Rex just you know, with his normal uh, <laughs> uh, low profile uh, addition to the uh, to the de development and evolution uh, just said uh, yesterday while we were here while I was over here he said okay you're trying to increase, increase the hip turn JH why don't you just turn both feet here and you see what that does and guys we hit some shots and 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 what we did a video but the batteries were flat and I missed it but what Bill Phillips did was he actually did that himself and felt exactly what I'm going to talk to you about now because what we did in the video that we, we couldn't put up because there was no audio was and what Mr X actually got to the stage where and, and this is the crazy thing guys this this will happen to you when you try this now the visual differential here is quite is quite funky because if, if we get into this position here and we know clearly that that ball is off the trail foot but if we turn the trail foot there it looks like the ball has now moved up to pass the center of the stance now if we move the lead foot up uh, uh, over and flare it it actually looks like the ball is now outside the lead foot but the reality is it hasn't moved so what we're seeing there, guys, is a, is, a, is a funky illusion only. But it's hard because you get there and the brain starts to, uh, to see an image that's not conducive to what you've been seeing. So you just have to get over that. But we had Mr. X actually flaring here and flaring there to the extent that he actually looked like he was playing a different golf course. He was actually pointed over here and hitting some shots. And he was hitting them straight to the target. Now I didn't go to that extreme. But what he said he felt, and I felt immediately that I went into that into that structure of flaring the trail foot significantly and then flaring the lead foot somewhat. When I hit shots, guys, I felt like there was a wall here, an abutment. And and the swing just came in here and hit that wall and it never went round the wall, it couldn't get past the wall because that lead side with, with, that, with that lead foot turned that way locks the knee to any rotation that way it doesn't want to rotate that way, it can't so the knock on effect anatomically is that the ankle's locked, the knee's locked the hip's locked and the torso's locked and the lead shoulder's locked it doesn't want to rotate, it can't rotate well this side can't rotate anyway, up to here can't rotate you can still turn your shoulders but they don't get open they still get just a little bit closed. So the anatomical reasoning here, guys, is that here where we're trying to free up rotation in the legs and in the knees and the hips, by having the feet pointed that way for the backswing is great. But on the downswing, there's no range of motion going through there. So this, this lead side just becomes a, an abutment because it can't rotate it. I can't rotate. That's as far as I can rotate that. It just stays there. So the arms just come in here, they run into to an invisible wall that we've created because of the orientation of that lead leg. And, and the knock-on effect, guys, is, is stunning. The knock-on effect is, is stunning. So see that ball there, guys? I just want to go through this for you. Watch where that ball is then. I'll get straight on. Look, it's at least middle of the trail foot. Look where it seems to be when I do that. It looks like it's now here looks like it's a foot forward of the trail foot but it's not I bring that back it's still where it was but if I bring this one over here and I get there like that guys that ball to me looks like it's almost outside my body visually 
as a, as a visual uptake um, presentation. It just looks like that. It is an illusion. And you have to come to grips with that illusion. But it's well worth doing that and going down that road because of the benefits of the, of the, of the shot. Now guys, what I found was that Okay, I got narrow, I flared, maybe 70 degrees. I then flared this foot, maybe 30 degrees. Now, now by doing all of that, what that's done is that's turned my hips around a long way out of dress. If I'm just here and I've got a little bit of flare, my hips haven't turned much. But as soon as I turn that and then turn that, look where the hips have gone. And I'll do that, guys, look. The hips, the hips are basically here. If I flare out a little bit, they go to there. If I flare out a lot, they go to there. If I turn this foot, they go to there. And the knock-on effect there is that the torso goes with it and the shoulder girdle goes with it. So the mechanical uh, knock-on rotational dynamics of that, or just the rotational mechanics of that, without any dynamics in it, well, there'll still be some dynamics because you're slowly moving, but not, not any speed dynamics. The knock-on effect there, guys, is that by doing that, we've already pre-increased pre our loadings or, or our turn factors or our ratios of turning, and it's quite extraordinary. Now, it looks bizarre, and, and for the uninitiated, if they were standing over there and they were anybody of any, you know, um, swing analyst... Uh, and analytical capability, they'd say, what's this guy doing? Is this guy, the wind has fallen out of that guy's mental watch. But guys, it's just, look, there's two flags here about 10 yards apart. Oh, about, about eight yards apart. No, maybe 10. Okay, watch this. Now I'll flare that foot out a little bit. Bring this in here. Now immediately that, that hip has turned. Now when I bring this in, the hips turn way over here. I feel now, guys, that I'm aiming 100 yards right. Now that's only because I'm into the turn. If I went from here and turned to here, I'd, I'd be in exactly the same orientation. Aiming, you know, looking over there and looking 100 yards right, but that's because I'm into the turn. But what happens here with this setup, with this address situation, when I turn that and when I turn this, all I've done is I preset. I preset that, that rotation. So you have to get over the feeling at address because you're not in the address position per se. What you are in is in the pre-turned halfway back position. And that's, that's the intellectual coming to grips with what we're doing here. The feeling is brought about because of where we are from a geometry perspective. Uh, rotational point of view. We are way into the backswing as a preset. Now watch this guys. Now here's the normal, this is the narrow stance. I flare that out. Flare that out. Now I'm going to flare that out. Now that just immediately looks like the ball's gone up there. It hasn't changed but it, but I'm back here. So this is the feeling really, this is the feeling I should be feeling when I'm back here in my golf swing with my hands up here. That's the feeling, and when I go to that position there, and I replicate what I, the position I was just in, I feel just like that. Just feel just like that. But the only reason it feels foreign, guys, is that we're getting that feeling at what we think is a dress. But it's not, it's actually a pre-turned um, anatomical uh, s status. In, in the backswing, we are pre-turned. Here we are. Normal. Little narrow stance here, only got the hips turned oh, 20 degrees. Now guys, first hit of the day with that narrow stance. That's just gonna, we've got a really hard left to right wind here. I'm gonna shoot some shots down range here today between these two flags. And you'll see the flags are ripping across here, so it's really hard uh, left to right wind. The right hand is nemesis. They no right hander likes practicing with the wind on their back. You know, Jack Nicholas would never practice with the wind on his back. You go to a point in the range where he wouldn't have it on his back. He said he hated it. So he said he was always trying to you know, compromise his balance. Okay, guys, so that was natural. And that was the first hit, and it was just perfect. So what we're going to do is we're going to 
we're going to flare that foot out even more, then we're going to bring this one around. Now guys, look at this. This is channel block. This is, this is what I feel like in this swing now. I feel that that's channel block. The clubs and the arms will never get over here. They'll never get over beside the body. They will always do this. They'll always go in that direction. Guys, this is first attempt on, on, well, we did that video yesterday, but we're basically fooling around. But we hit some amazing shots, and you know what? We never hit a bad shot. Oh, Mr. X hit a couple of, couple of uh, worm burners with the driver. But, you know, trying to hit a driver from there first up. Uh, but he got a couple that were just off the scale. So, guys, let, let's, uh, let's go over it again. Standard configuration. Narrow stance. Flare out. Maybe, you know, 60 to 70 degrees. Then, flare the... Uh, well, that's not a, not a flare, because a flare is an opening. This is actually a closing of the lead foot. We're opening the trail foot here in a flaring action, but we're actually closing the lead foot. We just, we're just, we just glide, glide closing it across the ground. So, but we can say it's, it's an additional reverse flare going that way. I don't have a terminology for it yet. Okay, so here we go. Standard configuration here. And I've had, actually had my foot that way, guys. I've had it flared that way, and I've had this one flared that way. So it was very much the Charlie Chaplin, or the duck stance. But now we're taking this, that flare and making it a, a closing uh, configuration. Okay, so here we go. Flare that way out, JH. Bring this one across. Wow, immediately I just feel blocked. I feel blocked. And look, guys, look. I'm blocked onto that leg there, and the trail foot's down. Does it feel weird? Oh, you bet your, you bet your sweet bippy it feels weird. I'm just not used to it. But the ball flight's amazing. It, it's actually quite scary in the backswing because you think, wow, what's going on here? Do I feel a lot of resistance in that lead side when I hit it? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, miles of it. Would there be... A downside to it if someone had you know a suspect knee or hip because as you come in guys this just this just braces up this is hitting against the firm lead side you know and you know, I used to say hit against a, a firm left side well this is very much lead side firm oh amazingly so I actually feel like this that's what I feel like shoulder goes like that okay Clear that out, bring this one across. Look guys, the, the, the trail foot's hardly moving. And I'm super, super tight right now. I haven't had any swings. I had a session in the gym for about an hour and a half. So I'm really tight. I'm always looking down here guys, because there are people coming, you know, from time to time. And I just, uh, I just want to uh, make, you know, see they're coming. Okay, so all right, now see if we can do a good job of this. Okay, we're here, closed stance, flare that foot way out, flare this one across. It's amazing that I can make contact because it feels, it feels so, uh, feels so, really feels different, and I've got to be frank, when I'm here, no, I can't be frank, Frank's the, the manager and he's not here, I'll be John, but, but when I do flare that out, here, and I flare that out, I really feel that I'm going to have trouble getting back to the ball, because there is a dispositional mass change, there's no question about it, I can feel the mass now, in the lower half more proportion that way even though it's still down the trail axis so I'm not actually sure what's going on there and I'll have to come to grips with with some explanation on it but this is just just something that I that I want I want to show you that that going forward a modification of this will probably end up being 
in the final protocol. I won't flare that across quite as much, but I will flare the trail one out. But I've gone from there to there. I've got about only 10 degrees of, of closure on it. That's as good as I can hit a guy. Okay, even though I'm going for more hip turn, I haven't tried that yet, and I don't think I'm getting much. What, what I think, I was thinking last night, after I went home, when I've, when I've got this flare going here, I feel like, oh, the ball's way up here. So to eliminate that, why wouldn't I do this? At address, play it back six inches then turn and get here now that ball's in a great position now and it's six inches behind the trail foot effectively but when i flare that out and flare this it's in perfect position it feels like here we go guys this is the evolution and i'll get straight on this is the evolution this is this is the tweaking of the protocol okay if i get here normally that's where the ball is and, and I feel that. I feel that position when I'm back. I feel quite comfortable there. When I back cock there, or when I flare there and turn there, I feel like the ball's so far forward. It's not. But because I'm so far into the turn, it feels like that at address. So to eliminate that feeling, I'll start it back six inches behind, or maybe eight inches behind the trail foot. Flare the trail foot, flare the lead foot. Now that just feels in perfect position. <laughs> and that's eight inches. Look, look how far behind the foot. But when I get there, and guys, that's just, you've got to, you, that is just a sensational impact. Now guys, I'm not a gouger, I'm not a digger. I, I, I just collect the ball. I always hit it, hit the ball. I'm not, as Mo Norman said, he's, he's, he doesn't hit tees and he doesn't want to hit the ground. He wants to hit the golf ball. And this, this is a very shallow golf swing. But guys, what about a revela revelation of the evolution here? Look at this. Eight inches behind the trail foot. Flare the trail foot. Turn the lead foot. Close it. Now I can make perfect contact with it. And that ball is so far back. Let's go through that again. Normal position. Here. I'm moving up. Eight inches. Flaring. Turning the lead foot. That feels like in the normal position with the lead foot not flared. Guys, I killed that. Absolutely murdered the ball. Okay. The ball's so far back. It's going to be a long video, guys. A lot going on here. What going on? Look at this, normal position. I moved up eight inches. I put the flared the foot. Gosh, you've got to see that ball fly. And when I hit down range, you probably will. I hope, yeah, there's some blue sky there today. That's amazing, guys, isn't it? That's extraordinary. Now this will blow a lot of you guys heads right off. And you'll say, JH, you've lost it. No one can do this. But I just thought about that then. And this is how the evolution comes to me, guys, in the bits that it does. It just comes to me this way. Because I know I have to do something to get a result. And I know the benefit of having both feet uh, flared, but it was very difficult on me, uh, feel-wise, with the ball in that position. So let's take that, that difficulty of feel away. Let's move the ball to there. Let's flare. Let's move that to there. See, the arms stay inside the shoulder line. Okay, let's do that again. Here we go. Ball's back here. Feet close together. Flare that. Turn that. Guys, I keep, I've never hit the ball better than that. 
that's a different ball flight for me. That is just, and I don't even know how to explain that ball flight. Got a different spin characteristic, different flight character, everything. It just looks like it's just been spat out like that. I'll get it straight on. Look at this. Guys, look at this. That's where the ball is. Flare the foot, JH. Turn the lead foot. The ball doesn't move, and you'll see that when I hit down range. It does not move. Oh, look, it's tough. It's tough on the psyche. Get the brain saying, what are you doing? And probably I don't know yet exactly what I'm doing. But let's try and get it perfectly right. Here we are. Normal ball position, come up eight inches. Flare. Get the feet close together, flare. Turn. Now if I can incorporate the ready pause or the ready code in that, I'll get it going. It's very hard at the moment because I don't know what I'm doing. I'm very anxious to start the downswing. Okay, just just settle down, turn it there. I've got to get closer to it. There it is guys. There it is. Gotta get closer to the ball. Wow. That's just flying all those other balls. By about probably eight yards, just straight over the top. Okay, here we are, normal ball, back here. As I say, it's going to be a long video, guys, but I think it's worth it. Flare J H. Close stance, get this one across. Get a bit closer. Really get a bit of hip turn going. You think the ball would go over there, it doesn't go over there. It just never looks like going over there ever. Okay, here we are. Flare. Close. The hits are great, but I'm just anxious to hit it. If I could just not be anxious. Don't be anxious, James. They're all going dead straight. Here. Flare. Turn. Close to the ball. There it is, guys. There it is. Well, that's amazing that I never really miss hit any shot. Just was a bit anxious on the release on a couple. But that was perfect. And I'll get this. I just have to feel like I'm standing much closer to the ball really strange look at this guys look flare flare turn get closer there it is guys that's just amazing golf shot just different ball flight all right guys i'll just won't make the video too long but i've got other parts that i want to uh, touch on today so i'll stop this video and i'll I'll, uh, I'll come back and, and we'll do a couple of others uh, with a couple of other different aspects. But it's very, very exciting. Man.